Um, all right, uh, so we're going to get started. Um, thank you for coming, or I guess staying after lunch uh, for our talk. Um, so here we're going to be talking about how we can put your 3D on the web without you ever touching WebGL at all, because WebGL is not easy. And we're just mere mortals doing JavaScript. What do we know about low-level hardware API, right? Um, and yes, this is a sponsored talk, so we'll be talking about um, one of our new WebGL engines um, at Autodesk here. And my name is Nov. I'm one of the developers, WebGL developers on the project. So first off, um, how many people of here have heard of Autodesk? So about half the people. I don't expect too much because um, you know, Autodesk has actually been around for quite some time. We're like, kind of like Microsoft, been around since 1980s. But we've been doing desktop software for a while. But recently, we're getting um, into, onto the web and bringing our 3D expertise onto the web. Uh, we're a company that does uh, 3D design software for engineering and architecture and things like that. AutoCAD, is you might have heard that one. That's one of our products. OK, enough about Autodesk. Let's jump right in. So first, what are we actually talking about? So let's just show it off instead of talking about it. Live demos are better than slides. All right. So this is the thing that we're talking about here. This is a fully interactive 3D rendering engine um, that displays your design files right in the browser with the power of WebGL. And this is where we are at now. WebGL is very powerful. As you can see, um, we're getting a lot of the features that we're getting in the latest game engines these days. So let me zoom into some of the details that we're getting from this guy. So as you can see, this is, you know, just to remind you, this is running in Chrome right here. We're getting kind of, you know, PlayStation 3 uh, quality um, graphics. So now that we see what it looks like, um, let's, you know, talk about why you want to use this and how. All right. So the problem we're trying to solve with this API is the thing with design um, files is that they come in a whole range of file formats. And these file formats are locked up behind these giant and uh, most of the time very expensive pieces of software that individuals like us don't really have access to unless you work for a large company that can afford it. So let me, let me give you a typical story, OK? So this is you. You want like someone to make you a tractor. You don't know how to make it yourself, so you hire a designer. Your designer takes your favorite, his favorite software, whatever that is, um, goes to work for a couple of weeks. He's made some progress, and he wants to, you to check it out. So you're like, sure, OK, just email it to me. And then soon after, you realize that's a pretty bad idea because that file is something like half a gigabyte because it's like a design file. It's got way lots of data in it. Um, so you have to set up some Dropbox uh, shenanigans, and OK, it takes two hours to download. Finally, once it hits your computer, you're like, what the heck is like an IPT file? How do I open that? Do I need like Acrobat or download something from the internet? So you're like, OK, I'll, I'll hit Google and look for a .IPT extension. Um, after a couple hours of more searching around, you finally landed on the website of this company called Autodesk that you never heard of. Um, and you're like, great, this is a software that I need. I'll just go right here and download it, um, buy, buy it, and then expense it to accounting or something. And then so you go down here, you're going to click download, and then you realize it costs a bajillion dollars. And, and at this point, you're just like, OK, let me just give up. <laughs> um, OK, but what if I tell you that it doesn't have to be that way? Um, so let me take you to our new uh, little web app that can help you solve this problem. Let me refresh it to just make sure it still works. OK. So let's say I have this file here called guitar1119. Um, I have no idea what it is. Uh, it, it might be a guitar, because it's like a black box, literally. I don't know what's inside it. Um, so I'm going to drop it right here, and it's going to upload my file to a server. Once it's done uploading, it's going to do some processing on it. And it shouldn't take too long, depending on the internet. Boom, there it goes. All right, and once it's done, it should show me what's in it. Figures crossed. Man, this is so close. This is fur furthest I got. Oh, OK, so we're, we, we got some buttons. 
some things are coming in. So we're also loading things part by part, so you don't have to finish. Wait for the entire half a gigabyte file to finish. So it's loading in a little bit at a time. Let me hit refresh again, maybe. There it is. Oh, well, <laughs> don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> OK, I have, I have the page already loaded, OK, in the next tab. But as, as you can see, it worked. Um, all right, so it turns out to be a fake guitar from Guitar Hero. But it's great, because I, now I can see that it's a fake guitar, and the guy didn't actually send me a real guitar. But this is the actual 3D model, so I can actually go in, and it's fully interactive. I can look at like all the little parts that's in this file. Um, and let's say I'm, you know, I want to see what's inside this plastic case. I can just open it up, and I see that my designer has been slacking off and actually has not finished the inside of this guitar, but which you would have known if you don't have this and can't actually open the file. Um, OK, so that's, actually, that's basically the main idea. Um, and let's look at some more um, complicated examples. So this guy right here is a pretty dense model. And again, it's still running smooth 60 frames a second. OK, maybe close to it, but um, good enough. And here you can really see the high quality rendering. I'll just kind of zoom in to all the detail. We actually don't do any compression. We don't drop any detail. We bring all that in from the original software. Um, so you see all these nuts and bolts and screws. They are real geometry. So aside from the pretty image that you have here, behind this picture is actually also a lot of metadata that's attached to each piece. And we get all that in the web app as well. And you, you, you will get this through the API. So for example, if I want to kind of take a look at this, it has like the name that comes with it. So this one is, was a named. Um, it gives you some physical properties, uh, materials. Um, and all the other pieces have that as well. So, and then besides that, you also get the structure of the model. Um, you get name for every node, and you get how they're related to each other as well. Um, and then f with that, you can kind of click through and examine it a little bit. So like this piece is pretty interesting, and then you can dig into it a, a little more. So there's just a whole lot amount of data going on. OK, you get the idea. Um, and then, so what we're trying to build with this tool first is to better help you understand your design data. Because design data is, it's, um, is really dense, as you can see. It's 3D data, which is hard to understand. So we're building tools around it to help you kind of dig into it a little bit. So let's just show up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show a few examples. Um, so this, this car right here, wouldn't it be nice for us to be able to look inside this kind of gearbox that we have here, because it's kind of opaque. I can like try to take away things. That helps a little bit, but it's still hard to see what's going on in there. So we have this tool that helps us pull things apart, actually, and it's called the Explode tool. And it does just that. And it's by far one of the coolest features we have. So here we go. Someone like dropped a cup back there. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so the reason that we can do this is that remember that model tree that we have here. We know how everything is related to each other. That information is maintained. Therefore, we can write some logic, just very simple on the JavaScript side, to pull this apart relative to where its you know, groupings are. And then um, with this, you can kind of just also do it over and over because it's cool. <laughs> and <laughs> that doesn't get old. Um, and then finally, we, we, we can you know, get a lot of clarity on this gearbox, like what's going on in here. Like this is actually like five different pieces that's like interlocking. It's pretty cool. Um, and then there's this other piece down here, and then you can kind of fly in and out, get a much better clarity on this. And also, with all the pieces now exploded, you see how much really detail is in this model. Um, OK. Let's move on to a different example, which is a uh, building. So this house looks really nice from the outside. There's your entrance. They even give you a car. But houses are more interesting on the inside, right? So how do I look 
inside this house. Maybe I'll like go through this door, but then it's kind of hard to navigate around. Like, you know, it's not really a good way to take a look at what the rooms are, look like. So would it be nice if we can just open this right up? Well, it is, and we have a thing for that as well. So there's a tool that basically just slices your model in half, and this way you can inspect it by sliding this up and down, and it will kind of show you what's inside the house. So now I basically have a floor plan of the house. Um, and you slide up, and that's like the third floor. And if I want like a cross section of the house, I basically just take this and rotate it. And you get, now get a cross section of the house. Um, can we even do it the other way, of course? So just like that, okay? Um, cool. So there's a couple more features, like live collaboration. So we, we, we have a bunch of goodies um, in here, and it's, it's all available. But um, as a last demo, I just want to show you how robust our engine actually is. So this guy right here is quite the monster. Um, this is one of the largest models I have. It has over 10 million triangles. And if you know gaming at all, that's more than what you ever will get in like a game level um, easily. Um, we have a lot of optimizations that will load this into your browser and run it in um, reasonable frame rate, as you can see here. And to prove to you that all the detail is maintained, I'm going to do a, a stress test and look, search for all the screws in this model. Okay, and the code name for that is thin. And there you have all the screws in this giant tractor. And let me just take a look at one of these screws and prove to you that it's, whoops, I missed clicked, that it's real. So just think about how much detail is actually in this. And this, again, is in your browser, running with just JavaScript. You never know JavaScript could do so much. All right. So now that you see all the flashy things that you do, you're asking, like, how can we have this, right? So we actually have an API that we have a JavaScript library, a bunch of server-side services, um, a couple of things you need to do to set it up, but we all provide that for you. I won't have time to go over it, but all the information is online. Um, or you can ask us later at the desk. Um, what I do want to talk about is um, one of the easier ways to use our viewer which is using web components. Now, people have heard of web components. It's, everyone's excited about it. You know, It's like the newest thing. And I am too. So what that means is um, with our customer element, you can use our viewer with just one line of HTML. So if you know how web components work, they look just like native HTML tags. You just have to declare that in the name of the tag and for our API, you just have to define your URL to your file that you want to display. So kind of like an image tag, like you have a src equals something. And with just one line, you will get our viewer in your HTML. So let me just demo that live. So this is what you get with just that one line. And let me show you that there is no trickery. I will pop up my console here. and it looks just like a regular HTML tag. Um, and yeah, it's, you get the, the, the whole thing. And from there, you can call some API on it. Let me just, I'll, I'll just do some quick samples. Um, so first, I need to grab the reference to that element here. You can see that. So we now have the reference to that element. Under that element is a variable called the viewer, and this is where everything is. So if you do dot, we have a lot of things in here. So that's, that, that, that's our engine right there. So I'm just going to call something simple. Our favorite feature of the day, explode, and give it a value of 0.5, goes from 0 to 1. If I do that, boom. So that the viewer updates, everything handles, the shadows, reflections, everything for you. Um, well, this one, the re reflection is not on. Well, I can, I can do that. Uh, set ground reflection true. Yes, so it's, it's just, just like that. So we have all this 
um, available, documented, easy to use. Um, and I think that's all I want to show. Um, there's a lot more that a viewer can do, and I can tell you all about it. Um, but I only have 15 minutes, so that's it. Um, these, these are links on the slide. And I think the slides will be made available later. And um, here are my contacts info. Um, I'm also supposed to say that we are also hiring front end, back end, the whole shebang. Um, so please come talk to us at the booth afterwards. And thank you very much for listening. The question is, does it only support DWF files? And my ear phone thing is off. Um, so if you go on our website here, OK, he doesn't want to do that. OK, here. Um, we actually support 50 different file formats. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. So we take everything, and it's it turned it into kind of a neutral format, but we save all that data. And then we, we, we push it through to the front end. So we have a whole translation service that takes um, 50 different file formats and then translate it to a kind of neutral um, JSON-friendly format that would load up on the web. Um, the question is, do we use any open source libraries? Yes, we do use 3.js. And I highly recommend that library as a very good WebGL library for someone who's not familiar. Um, but we do use 3.js. And we fork it and made a bunch of heavy modifications to it. Yes? If the file's already on the 360 cloud storage, we do have a cloud storage service. And this is using that. So in order to load the file, you, it, it loads it from the cloud storage. So we have a bunch of services on the back end that we hook together to kind of create this experience. And if you sign up as one of our developers, you get access to all that. Um, I think we, one thing is also the internet is not very good, because that data is very small. Um, the model I dragged in is only about 300K, so that is really not it. Um, if the JSON is arriving, you will actually see parts of it load at, at, at a time. So let me show you. Um, I actually am not sure. Um, usually, the page is loads. Um, but I can talk about how we stream this thing. So let me load, it, load up the model again. You will see that parts of it slowly come in. So we kind of do the optimization where we break this giant uh, 3D file into little chunks that are consumed, that e each of them are, can be individually consumed by the engine and displayed independently of all the other things that are coming in. And so as they're coming in, we just throw it up so that you have something to work with. It's kind of like very, very similar to you know, what the paradigm that we used to on a web page, things loading you know, at different, a, as they come in. So if the file's loading, you will kind of see it partially here. Yeah. OK, that's it then. Um, thank you very much.